Hello everyone and especially all of my 8 subscribers! <laughs> so, today it's kind of a gloomy day outside and I decided it is the perfect day to not work on my essays but to film a new YouTube video. Today's video is about my very exciting 23andMe results. Oh, and by the way, I already got these results over a month ago, so nothing is going to come as a surprise for me. I just want to go through these results with you guys because I think they are just so interesting. Not particularly my results, but just the genetic results in general are very interesting. <laughs> I got my laptop and everything set up over here, so I'm all set to go through my results with you guys. Let's sign in! So I'm going to start with the ancestral report and I just want to point out that uh, I pretty much already knew most of my family history, so I wasn't expecting any surprises here. Uh, just in general, Finnish people tend to know their family history pretty well. So we don't really get too many surprises usually. <laughs> Here are my so very exciting results. As you can see, I am obviously 100% Vilma, which is really nice. And uh, also 100% European. Specifically 97.8% Finnish. That's pretty damn Finnish. Also 0.5% Scandinavian and 1.6% broadly Northwestern European. Actually, when my results first came in, they were claiming that I am 0.1% Melanesian. <laughs> and I obviously found that ridiculous. But about a week later, my results got updated and they put in that Scandinavian instead. So now most of the people who are not Finnish are probably going to be like, Oh my god, you are so Finnish! But this is actually a pretty normal result for a Finnish person. Throughout the history, Finnish people were quite isolated for a long time. And that's the reason why many Finnish people in fact get 100% uh, Finnish as a result. I believe that due to the isolation, Finnish people have some gene mutations that are actually pretty different compared to other Europeans. And that's why Finnish DNA is relatively easy to pinpoint on these tests. I think 23andMe has uh, some kind of graph about it. Let me see if I can find it. So as you can see, Finnish people are the blue group right here. And it's very different compared to the other nations in Europe. Another ethnicity that is kind of comparable to Finnish people are Sardinians. As you can see here, they are also pretty isolated from the rest. For example, you can see here that 23andMe has a persistent rate of 96 and a recall rate of 89% for Finnish DNA. So in practice, I think this means that if your report says that you are part Finnish, there is a 96% chance that that is true. And in general, they are able to detect the Finnish DNA 89% of the time. And in comparison, that is a very high rate. Like if we look at our lovely neighbor Scandinavians, for example, they have a persistent rate of 94, which is pretty similar to the Finnish one. But the Scandinavian recall rate is only 46%. So that means that they are able to detect the Scandinavian DNA only 46% of the time. One thing that I really love about 23andMe is that you are able to change the confidence level of your results. So the default level is 50%, but I am able to change the confidence level up to 90%. And if I do that, you can see that I am now only 99.9% .9 European. So there's 0.1% of unknown. I suddenly got a lot more interesting, didn't I? Here at 90% confidence, I am 93.8% Finnish, 3.8% broadly not Western European, and 2.2% broadly European. It's still pretty damn Finnish, isn't it? There's one thing that I would like to know though. So if there's any genetic experts watching this video, please comment down below and tell me. I know that on my mom's mom's side, 
we have some French ancestry, but it goes all the way back to like 1700s or something like that. So is it possible that that tiny, tiny French part could still show up on my DNA or is that 1.6% probably not Western, just uh, more Finnish and Scandinavian DNA? I would love to know. Also, I have read that the genes of Western and Eastern Finns are quite different from each other, but uh, my family is from Northern Finland, so I am not sure how that impacts me. Also, what I have found really frustrating about some other Finnish people's DNA videos is that uh, they claim that because they have some relatives in the United States, they must be part American then. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like, no honey, that's not how it works. But now let's move on from the ancestry report and take a look at my wellness and trait reports. Oh, and by the way, I also run my results through Prometheus. So now I pretty much know all the health reasons that could cause my death at some point. <laughs> uh, so I might add a little bit of information here and there that I got from there as well. Alcohol flush reaction, unlikely to flush, that is true. Caffeine consumption, likely to consume more. Also, many of my Prometheus reports told me that I am extra sensitive to caffeine, which I have definitely been observing through the years. And that is actually the reason why I very rarely drink coffee. It just makes me go crazy. I usually just drink tea. It makes me feel much better. <laughs> deep sleep, less likely to be a deep sleeper. I can agree with that. Genetic weight, predisposed to weight about average which is also true, I have always waited about average. Lactose intolerance, likely tolerant, true. Muscle composition, common in elite power athletes. Well, I definitely suck at long distance running and anything that requires endurance, so it makes sense, I guess. Likely to weigh more on a high saturated fat diet. And I think this is actually a pretty useful piece of information. Also, my Prometheus report stated that uh, it would be easier for me to lose weight on a low-fat compared to low-carb diet. Sleep movement, slightly more than average movement. I'm not sure that I agree with this. I don't think I move too much when I sleep. Cilantro taste. Slightly higher odds of disliking. I like cilantro, so... Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair. Well, I have a pretty thick hair for a Finnish person, but compared to the world average, I definitely don't have a thick hair. Then there's wake up time, which I actually was really excited about when I first read this report. Even though it says that my average wake up time is around 9.02 a.m. When you click the reports, you can actually see that compared to most other people, I am almost as night person as one can be. <laughs> and that is so true. I always stay up till like 3 a.m. or something like that. And then I cannot wake up early in the morning. And I have been like that since like middle school. So it's in my genes. Asparagus likely can smell. Bitter taste, likely can taste. Cheek dimples, likely no dimples. Cleft chin, likely no cleft chin. Earlobe type, likely detached earlobes. Earwax type, likely wet. Eye color, likely blue or green eyes. Well, I have bluish green eyes, so yes. Finger length, likely ring finger longer. I actually think that my, uh, what is this finger called? I forgot. Well, whatever. I think they are the same length. Also, same goes with my toes. It says that my big toe should be longer, but I think my big toe and the toe next to it are the same length. Freckles. Likely a lot of freckles. Well, I guess that's a matter of opinion. I do have quite a lot of freckles, but they are so light that you are almost not able to see them most of the year. Hair texture. Likely straight or wavy. My hair is wavy. Uh, light or dark hair, likely light. Well, Finnish people would definitely consider me a brunette. But in comparison to the rest of the world, it makes sense. It's pretty light still. 
red hair. Likely no red hair. Yes, that's very true, but I do have one red hair variant. So that means that I could potentially have red haired children, I guess. And it also means that I get sunburned really easily. Skin pigmentation, likely lighter skin. Yeah, obviously I am as white as can be. Sweet versus salty, likely prefer salty, yes. And that was it. The only things that are left are their health reports. I am 20 times more likely to go blind when I get older. So that's a good thing. And also Prometheus told me that I am much more likely to get the Finnish national disease Sepelvaltimotauti. What the heck it was in English? Coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease. Yes, I am more likely to get that. Also, according to Prometheus, I have a greatly improved memory performance and a lack of empathy. <laughs> I have 311 Neanderthal variants. And what I found pretty interesting is that I have one variant that makes me about one inch shorter. So I guess from now on I will just blame Neanderthals for my height. But I have now gone through the most interesting bits of my results with you guys. I have been exposed to the world. I feel so naked right now. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today and I hope I will see you guys in my next video. Bye bye!